yearning of when you want a baby, if it's the first one or the second, even if you've got one, it's, it's no, no different, different, is it? No, no. different. I found, I, and it's funny because I was sort of thinking, oh, you know what? I'm, I am lucky. I have got Annabelle. You yeah. know what? That I sh should be thankful, and I am thankful. But it's like I want. I, I just was like, oh my god, I want another one. I really do. Yeah. And so then I was like, okay, well, what? Like I. What can I do? You know, and I think if we could have adopted, we probably would have. But adoption laws in Australia—it's just hideous, isn't <sighs> it? They can't even. No. Seriously. Did you look into that to start yeah, with? Yeah. Just, just really like just high level, and it's like too old, was sick. Like just yeah. no, no, no. It's like oh, you guys, come on, you yeah. know. And so then. It's like, well, we've got these embryos. I just need someone to carry them. And then somebody that I know said to me, listen, um, I know someone who did surrogacy in the States and they had a great experience and they loved it and they used this agency. And so I just was like, okay, why don't I try this and let's see what happens. And then Rachel, like an angel, came into our life, you know. So mm -hmm. feel really, you know, it's funny, two such starkly different experiences. Yeah. Um, each special in its own yeah. way, right? Each so uniquely special. So how does the, the process, like when you said, okay, I'm, we want to do this and then you found Rachel. Yep. How does, you know, I know that's a, a very lengthy, big conversation. Yeah. But in, in, you know, how does the process so play out? It, it's a little bit, um, so America's great, right? Like America is, everything's set up, everything's organised, everything's, um, you know what they like when they do it, they do it. They do it big and they yeah. do it well, right? So it's a bit like a dating agency. You'll say, okay, I, I want a surrogate. Um, our situation is a bit different because I was like, I, I need a surrogate who will do this for free. I no. need somebody who will do this free because you cannot pay for a surrogate. Why can't you? Again, Australian sense. laws. Again, so ridiculous. If you're in America though, can you pay them? No. So if, if you're an Australian, if you're a New South, a resident of New South Wales, you cannot pay a surrogate for her services. What about if you lived in America? Can if you're you an pay? American resident, yes. Right. Yeah, in America, it's perfectly legal. Oh my gosh. And this is the thing when people say, "Oh no, the surrogate shouldn't get paid." The first thing I say is, "Well, hang on. The doctors are getting paid. Yeah. All the lawyers are getting paid. The fertility guy, the embryologist, the hospital, like." Out of the whole process, which is super expensive, the amount that the um, surrogate gets is so small, right. and yet she does the biggest part. Yeah. You know, I would think that that absolutely that Don't, that law has got to change. And also, though, but anyone to think that why why wouldn't she? It's like well, Pe people are funny. I don't know. People say all sorts of funny things. People like, are real. Uh, pe uh, and I and I, like whatever. Don't judge. Absolutely judge you. Why would you not? What is the issue with that? I don't know. I, I don't, don't understand. understand I don't no. get it either. Like, there's no honestly. Why shouldn't she get paid? Yeah. So they have obviously all these surrogates that they've screened, that they've um, have all been through their medical tests, psychological tests. They've all got them, and so then. Again, but because I wanted somebody who would do it for free, the agency said to me, listen, I know someone who has done it once before. She wants to do it again, but she wants to do it for something special. And she's right. like, I think you guys might hit it off. And so we had this kind of FaceTime call, like her and wow. her husband and me, oh Marcus. I know. And it's like dating, right? So yes. I was like, Marcus, get dressed up. Like, let's make sure we look like, and don't swear. Don't say it. And he's like, oh, he's like I don't swear. He's like, you swear. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I was like, okay, I won't swear either. Let's be really good. Let's wow. be presentable. Let's hope they like us, you know. So we did this um, Skype call with them and we were just like, we just loved them. And um, and then they said, yeah, they'll, they would do it. And we we're just like, oh my God, that's amazing. And so then it's a case of, you get the embryos sent across and can you believe it's actually someone's job to come and get embryos and take them on the plane with them and then oh take them over. <laughs> I, know. Oh I know. And um, and then you basically, it's it's like for her it's an IVF cycle. So right. she basically does IVF and then when she's ready they put the embryo in. And so what happened was we went across to meet with her the right. first time and meet the family and meet Scott and she's got three girls who are all like the same age as Annabelle so they're like... I think Annabelle at the time was like three, so her hers were like two, four, and five or wow. whatever. So they're all like besties, you know. So now they Snapchat with each other every oh, day, and gorgeous. it's cute. And so um, we put the first one in, and it took. Wow. And we were just like, oh my god, this is like a dream run. We've been so lucky, and um, everything was going along great until eleven weeks, and then she had a miscarriage. But the heart just stopped beating, mm -hmm. and then we were just. I th yeah, I think that really, after everything, we're just like, oh my God. 
yeah. we were heartbroken. Of course. And then we were like, okay, let's try again. Next one didn't take. And then we thought, okay, we'll try again. Next one didn't take. And then at that point, Marcus's mum was really sick and she was like terminally sick. So we're like, we just need a break. We just needed. And Rachel was so patient. She was like, take as much time as you want. And at that point, we only had one embryo left. And wow. so, and it's funny because people are saying, you know, maybe it's it's her, maybe like, she, you know, she's not the right surrogate for you, you should change to another surrogate. And she herself was like, if you want to go, if you don't feel obliged, if you want to, you know, use somebody else, you can use someone mm. else. Like I, I, you know, I won't take it personally, but I'm like, I felt so connected yeah. to her, you know, it was like we'd been through too much together, you wow. know, I felt like we had lost that baby together, the first wow. one, you know. She's so kind and nurturing and loving that I just was like, I, I can't do this experience with someone else. However wow. this turns out, this experience is for you and me. We are bonded in this way. And I, and I was surprised at, because I think initially before I began, I was like, it's a bit like a service. Mm. It's a bit at arm's length, you know. But when you're, it's so personal, right? Yeah. When you when you see your embryo go into someone and, and also like the love and care, yeah. right? The love and care, like she's going to all the appointments all the time, you know? She's the one taking the medication. She's the one rubbing her belly and talking yeah. to the baby, you know? She's got the three girls sitting around reading stories to the baby, you know? Like it's so powerful. She's an angel. She's an angel. Like, she's an wow. angel. She is an angel. Because I sit here and go, I don't think I could do that. Can you imagine? No. Can you imagine? She's a nurse right in the neonatal ward, so she loves babies. Wow. She is so kind. And you know, like I that... I feel bad saying that. But oh. I just don't... I, I, don't, I, don't I think, think, think many people couldn't. No. I don't think I could. It's you know? So, and there was a point where, for a while, and, and it wasn't, you know, we my best mate and I talked for a while, it looked like she was going to have quite a lot of trouble... And we just spoke about, would we ever do that for each other? Didn't even know if it was a possibility. Yeah. And in my heart of hearts, I thought, I don't I think know if I, I can. can. Because at the end, you have to hand, hand the baby yes. over, right? Yes. You have to. And it's funny, Rachel, she's like, well, it's not mine. She's like, and I remember when I found out it was a girl and I said to her, do you want to know? And she was like, no. She's like, I don't want to know. She wow. said, it makes no difference to me. She said, I'm just carrying this for you. She How said, did she emotionally... She's done that. it once before. I don't. I don't know. I don't it's know. Incredible. It's Yeah, it's incredible. She's like, I have my family. This yeah. is not mine. I'm just growing it for you. Wow. You know, it's an amazing wow. person. Yes. You know, um, but you know what's funny? It, so when Alyssa was born, so that night when Rach came into my room and she was holding her, so Alyssa was asleep and or well, she had her eyes shut. Anyway. Rachel's holding her and she was like, hello, baby girl, flung her eyes open and looked up at her. And I was like, oh, my God, that's the voice you've been hearing wow. for nine months, just talking to you every night and nurturing you and loving you. Like, she knew her voice. Wow. No question. No question. You know? Wow. And I was like, that bond, and that's what I mean, it's like... I. I couldn't have done it with anyone else. No. I was like, however this happens, this is for you and me to do together, wow. you know? Yeah. And the last one did work. It worked. And you got so your lucky. baby girl. Got my baby girl. 